Hey guys, Robert and Ingrid here, and we're about to go see Frank Miller's solo directorial feature with The Spirit. Do you know about The Spirit? I do not. This is he, the first time hearing of it. He's an old pulp hero. One of the earliest pulp heroes. Not the, but one of. And akin to, like, The Green Hornet and um, The Shadow. Ah, okay. Created by Will Eisner. Let me put it this way, give you the heads up. This one's going to be more of a absurd comedy that's going to go so over the top of your life. But I can tell you this, a lot of stuff in here, it's not from the comics. All right. But it's going to be, I think it's going to be one of those so dumb, it's so bad, it's fun type I of movie. I feel like that's kind of a good palate cleanser. Yep. But it's going to also be just so, you're going to be like, oh, brother, oh, Lord, oh, God. You know, <laughs> like a lot of what you saw in Sin City, basically it's getting the Sin City treatment. That's why it feels almost like a sister movie to it. Hmm. But... And there's going to be a lot of blubbery ladies again. Of so, course there are. <laughs> trust me, though, not as gratuitous as Ava Green. Fortunately. So we'll see you guys on the other end. Hey, guys, we just got done, and... What did we just watch? Yeah. Okay. It's not a bad movie. The Spirit is not bad. It's definitely a so bad, it's good movie. But it's like, basically, it's not shit, but it's not... Go, a great Iser. It's that mm -hmm. weird limbo, wouldn't you say, where it's like, yeah, it's an experience. It's an experience. It's kind of the best way to describe it, and it's very much one that you gotta have a certain taste for. Yeah, Frank. This felt like it was Sin City. He was going for film noir, so he had a stand a setting for that, and they built off of it. It was good, but this this felt like one of his super later superhero comics in the wonkiest of ways. Mm -hmm. Like, one, the spirit. Give him the healing factor. Hmm. The cure, the, he never had it. It works for the story. Yeah. And the octopus. What the hell is the octopus? Mm. I think the octopus put it best, actually. This movie was just plain damn weird. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard to explain it. And yet, it's so simple of a plot, too, though. Uh-huh. It's like, okay, the plot is basically spirit and the octopus are are dealing with each other. An old flame, Sans Serif, shows up. She wants the um, Golden Fleece, and the, the octopus wants the blood of Hercules. But you gotta remember, Hercules is the Roman definition. Hercules is the, the Greek one. And, um, but they end up taking the wrong box. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's trying to get a swap. Cause why, and why does San want it? It's a shiny thing. It's, it's an the, extremely shiny thing. The shiny thing to end all shiny things. Mm -hmm. And the octopus wants the blood because of a formula that's made both him and his spirit immortal. It'll stabilize and make him like a god if he drinks the blood of a demigod, Hercules. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And they fight and they win. But everything in between. One, the ladies. Oh, boy, oh, boy. What did you think about all the different ladies in this movie? Hmm... Not as good as the old town girl, old old town girls, but at the same time, there's a lot of ladies to like, like the rookie. Mm -hmm. And Ellen was a good girl character. Like they have so many ladies here because Frank likes ladies, but it feels like the personalities are more from the actresses than the characters. Yeah, I could definitely agree with you on that. You know what I mean? It feels like the actors are giving more of a characterization than they are needs to be. Mm -hmm. Like, Ellen. Ellen probably is the flattest of the ladies, but yet the actresses gives her this naivete to her. Mm -hmm. And they're all gorgeous. All the ladies in this movie are gorgeous. Oh, and by the way, the stuff that happened in um, Dame to Kill for with the nudity, this movie had it more like it. Yeah, this is more what we were, were expecting. Exactly. The most gratuitous we got was a butt shot, and that was quick. And then even when she drops the towel, which, good gag. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. You're having a woman with a towel around herself, and you say, drop, you know, put your hands up. What's she going to do, right? Yeah. But even when that happens, yes, they shot her naked, clearly, but the camera was focusing on him where she's out of focus. That was fine. That's why I kept saying was, um, Ava, they should have had it be, at least for the moonlight when she's swimming, have the sun distort it. Mm -hmm. I mean, not the sun, the, the moonlight distort it. But um, we have her, um, and Sandy's. is... Okay, let's be honest. Anyway, the best scene was the flashback. Yeah. Even you felt that was like the best scene, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the best scene with her was the flashback. Where different actors, of course, but yeah, basically going in the past, um, Sand and Dan Denny Colt, the, the spirit before he was the spirit, they grew up together in in Central City. 
But then, uh, and his, uh, her father was a cop. His uncle was a, a boxer. And one night, father get, his uncle gets into a um, altercation, and her father gets shot, and then the uncle kills himself. And uh, Sand hates cops. But more out of a, my father was a cop. He died, and Danny wants to be a cop. Just like my father, he's going to die. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame her. I it's don't not, blame her either. It's not an A cab kind of point of view. Not mm -hmm. like that. It's more just like a, what have cops done for me? They just took away my loved one and it's going to eventually take away my other loved one. Mm -hmm. So she basically says, I just want shiny seats. She starts to love things more than people. Mm -hmm. Again, makes sense. But, and Denny doubles down. He starts to, and becomes, he doesn't become a cop. He gets killed. And then testing his immortality formula, the octopus makes him the spirit. Yeah. And thus their rivalry begins. And then this movie is, mm, it feels like this has a plot of a short stretched out across a movie, doesn't it? That makes a lot of sense now that you put it that way. It just dawned on me, but doesn't it feel that way? Like the plot is for a short. Because mm -hmm. there's some stuff here that just doo -doo 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 -doo, meanders. Mm -hmm. And, okay, Scarjo steals her scenes more than even Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson has that, he reaches that peak of being most, uh, most not all the time, but most of the time, too over the top. Too ham and cheese. Hmm. And I'm somebody who normally likes some good ham. Yeah, but any stuff like the stuff about eggs, it's like, what's this stuff about eggs? They never explain it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, ready eggs. Now, there's one joke I know you you love, which was the whole, one of his henchmen, which are a bunch of clones, got run over by um, Silk and Floss. And then, um, and then later on when he's like, oh, go, and let me go to the hospital. If you go to the hospital, then I'm going to have a criminal mastermind like myself kind of explain why he doesn't give or provide medical insurance. <laughs> that was funny, was it? It's just like, that's, uh, it, basically, Silk and Floss and Octopus are like Shigo and Draken. Yeah. Especially Silk. And she felt so like Shigo. It's all like, why am I dealing with these idiots? Mm -hmm. And then we later on find out she's not taking any of it seriously. She thinks it's for fun when it's not. Yeah. Which then makes you wonder, how old is she supposed to be portrayed in this? Hmm. Clearly, ScarJo's a grown woman, but I think it's supposed to portray her as a younger girl. You know, when you read, when they had that dialogue. It's like, hmm. she says about, oh, I'll be able to pay off my college tuition. It's like, so what, she's supposed to be 19, 20? Hmm. Do you get that vibe at all? I didn't really think that much about it, to be honest. All right, but um, you explain a bit more what you saw with the movie. Hmm. I feel like it had the same kind of reaction I would to watching a good YouTube poop, in all honesty. Yeah. And I'll say this. A lot of supporting characters were good, like the commissioner. Yeah, the supporting cast was really the standout in this yep. movie. All the, almost all the ladies. The commissioner, oh God, the commissioner stole the scene every time. That actor was clearly putting his all into this. Because mm -hmm. he made the dialogue sound very good. The spirit... He was just doing what he was told. I think that you could so tell that, right? Yeah. But I gotta say, this whole, the spirit falls in love with every woman he meets really is like, what? Yep, and then also death is personified as a woman. Who wants him to. Now, granted, in that regard, I can understand because he keeps on leaving her. He keeps on cheating death. Yeah. So it can be more of a personification of what else would want him but a woman. Mm-hmm. So it made, that made sense. But again, it went nowhere. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Frank had in mind to make a series of this or whatever. I hope not. I hope he didn't. Because this was, you know, again, done in one. But there is stuff to like. Like, all the aesthetics were amazing. Yes, the aesthetics were good. It, it, it felt, it was still different from Sin City in its looks. But at the same time, just like Sin City. Like, the negative space is not as prevalent. Probably because they didn't use as much green screen as Sin City. Mm -hmm. But when it worked, it worked. Like his tie. Oh, yeah. The red tie and everything. It out was good. The use of negative space was still good. But it just felt like the plot. <clears throat> Didn't really know where it was going a lot of the time. Even though it was a simple plot. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the problem is, is it was too simple and there was way too much movie for the amount of time the plot would reasonably conclude. Yeah. Oh, Muffin. Muffin. The cat. There's a point where he kills the cat. There's a cat he's showing it off, and I knew you were going to hate that. 
at least they had the, the had the nicety to mostly show it as implied. But yeah, sad cat noises are just. Mm. And its eyes and, are the only thing still left. How is that possible? Mm. Like that, that that felt like a comic bit right there, didn't it? Like yeah. just the eyeballs being left. And at least he beats the crap out of things. And this is for Muffin. Mm -hmm. And you love it when he's like, that's it. Because of that cat, I'm going to kill you. Yeah, that part I found intensely relatable. Yeah, and the weird outfits that um, Jackson and Scar Joe went through were just like, especially the Nazi one, it was like. Wait, what? what's even the point of this? It was weird, but they went along with it. And just things like that. It's just, this movie was just, oh, oh the, again, The Rookie. I love The Rookie. The Rookie was very Played good. by Stana Kadic before Castle, and she gave it her all. And you could tell she was happy. You could tell when the actors were having fun. Mm-hmm. And I'd say the chemistry between Ellen and her father, the commissioner, that was great. Mm-hmm. That, so, that sold me. They felt like father and daughter, didn't they? Yeah. And the flashbacks showing off, you know, the origin of the spirit worked. Those flashbacks showing that origin stories were, yeah. And it, was, and it was mostly somber, pretty much, until it went back to the main plot. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, the whole, there are two chests, you know then they took the wrong one. Mm -hmm. Oh, the part you loved also was when the idiot henchman was like, oh, it must be in the other chest. What chest? What chest? It's like, yeah. we, we were watching. <laughs> you kept cracking up at those hench guys. Oh, yeah, just, that, yeah. Just the whole thing of, you should have just took them both back then. Yeah, but we was watching. <laughs> <laughs> I will give that. Those guys were goofs. Mm -hmm. Other goofs, weren't they? Yeah. But, and, and annoying at times, but not too annoying, except for that weird clone that was a head on a foot. Mm -hmm. like, like, the, like you said, it's just plain damn weird. But, but at the same time, it's like watching a train wreck. Mm -hmm. You can't look away. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's And again, there's stuff in here. It's like something about watching this you like, but you don't know how to. I think it's about problem. You know what I'm We're not putting it to good words because it's kind of hard to put the words. Yeah, it's just sort of one of those things where it's just like. It, An experience. An experience. You can't really. It's definitely one of those you had to have been there sort of things. Exactly. And I've watched it a couple of times before. It is a good re oh, some of you would want to rewatch even, right? Because it's just one of those, like, I'm just going to sit down. This is a turn your brain off movie of the yeah. highest magnitude. Wouldn't you agree? Something like that, yeah. And again, great ladies. I will say that Frank gets some great ladies in these movies. Mm -hmm. And the guy doing the spirit, it's a shame that this was his last attempt at doing a movie role and he just sticks to TV because he did a good job here mm -hmm. with what he was given. And again, just. It is what it is. That's mm -hmm. the best way to say it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. So, yeah. We got 300 next, though. That one. This is Sparta. Yep. We'll see you guys then.